This video is about document 3 titled Meiosis in chapter 1 basic mechanisms of sexual reproduction and at the end of it the student will be able to define meiosis, name and identify the different phases of meiosis and explain the behavior of chromosomes during the phases of meiosis. First of all in the organism concerning the number of chromosomes there are two kinds of cells diploid cells having two n chromosomes and haploid ones having n chromosomes if we consider humans as an example diploid cells contain two n equal 46 chromosomes this is the case of somatic cells or body cells like neurons and white blood cells and germ stem cells that are the mother cells of gametes all these cells undergo mitosis to renew on the other hand haploid cells contain n equals 23 chromosomes this is the case of gametes that are the female oocytes and male sperm cells and these gametes are obtained by meiosis undergone by germ stem cells that are diploid cells usually when a somatic cell having two n chromosomes undergoes mitosis it gives two cells having also two n chromosomes which means that there is conservation of the number of chromosomes on the other hand when a germ stem cell undergoes meiosis it gives four gametes having n chromosomes which means that there is no conservation of the number of chromosomes but what happens if meiosis doesn't exist in this case the gamete will also have 2n chromosomes and sexual reproduction involves gametes produced by individuals of opposite genders in this case the union of a sperm cell with 2n chromosomes and an oocyte with also 2n chromosomes by fertilization gives a zygote with 4n chromosomes which means that with 2n extra chromosomes and in this case the number of chromosomes of the species won't be constant and this is impossible so how does meiosis allow obtaining gametes with n chromosomes let's start with the definition of meiosis it is a cell division that allows obtaining haploid gametes from diploid germ stem cells and it takes place in male testicles and female ovaries what about the phases of meiosis let's watch this video and as you see at the beginning of the video the DNA was in a filamentous aspect which means that the cell was during interface
In fact, meiosis includes two successive divisions, each of them consists of four phases. Before meiosis, the DNA is in a filamentous aspect. So, when meiosis starts, chromosomes condense, and each of them appears in the form of two chromatids attached by a centromere. This is the beginning of prophase 1. In this case, in this example, at the beginning of meiosis 1 or prophase 1, the mother cell contains two unequal six chromosomes. After condensation, uh, there is pairing of homologous chromosomes, which means that homologous chromosomes group by pair. After that, homologous chromosomes coil around each other, they synapse, forming tetrads, which means that they intersect, and sometimes this allow allows the exchange of fragments between chromatids or a crossing over. This is prophase 1, which starts with the appearance of chromosomes, then they group, and finally they form tetrads. Now, during metaphase 1, chromosomes line in the equator of the cell, and they form the metaphase plate with pairs of homologous chromosomes. Then, during anaphase 1, homologous chromosomes separate and migrate towards the opposite poles of the cell. And at the end of the first meiotic division, at telophase 1, the first cytokinesis takes place, which means that the cytoplasm of the cell divides. We obtain two cells. Each of them contains n equals three chromosomes, and each chromosome is of two chromatids. During prophase two, the nuclear membrane in each cell disappears, then, during metaphase 2, the chromosomes in each cell line up along the equatorial plane to form the equatorial plate of the cell. Then, during anaphase 2, sister chromatids that were in the same chromosome separate and migrate towards opposite poles. And finally, during telophase 2, the second cytokinesis takes place, and we obtain four cells. In each one, there are three chromosomes, but this time of one chromatid, which means that n chromosomes of one chromatid. So, at the beginning, of the first meiotic division, there were two n chromosomes of two chromatids. At the end of it, there were n chromosomes of two chromatids. So, the number of chromosomes decreases, reduced from two n to become n, and for this reason, the first meiotic division is qualified as reductional. While at the beginning of the second meiotic division, there were n chromosomes of two chromatids, and at the end of it, there were n chromosomes of one chromatid, which means that the number of chromosomes remains constant, and for this reason, the second meiotic division is qualified as equation. Finally, how does the amount of DNA per cell vary during meiosis? At the beginning, the cell contains 
a certain amount Q of DNA and of course this amount represents a certain number of chromosomes and the chromatids per chromosomes. After that the amount of DNA doubles and the only way to double the amount of DNA is by DNA replication that aims to transform chromosomes of one chromatid to chromosomes of two chromatids. This means that the amount of DNA Q represents two N chromosomes of one chromatid. This is phase G1 of interphase at, and simply the number of chromosomes is 2n and the chromosomes are of one chromatid because the cell is before DNA replication and DNA replication takes place during phase S of interphase. After that the amount of DNA remains constant 2q this is during uh, phase g2 of interphase and the beginning of meiosis 1 and this amount 2q represents 2n chromosomes of 2 chromatids now the reductional division takes place and we know that the reductional division consists of separation of homologous chromosomes. So the amount of DNA per cell decreases from 2Q to become Q. But this time the amount Q represents N chromosomes of two chromatids. And now when the equational division takes place the amount of DNA per cell decreases from Q to become Q over 2 and we know that the equational division corresponds to separation of sister chromatids so the cell will contain N chromosomes of one chromatid at the end of the equational division.